This question is kind of about graphs, right? They're asking about a y-intercept, so that's an idea that we very much associate with a graph. So you could graph this in your Desmos calculator that's built into the SAT now, and you could look for the y-intercept. The problem is if it's something crazy like 132, you're gonna be scrolling for a while, that kinda of is a pain. And to be quite honest, the algebra here is not only easy, but it's essential that you understand it. So I'm gonna do the algebra only here. If we know something is a y-intercept, it means that x is equal to zero. This is just a definition you have to memorize. Y-intercepts have an x-coordinate of zero because it's where the line, or whatever it may be, crosses the y-axis. So what's my x? It's zero at that point. This is just definitional. So all we have to do now is plug points into equations. We know half of a point. That's good enough. So where does it go? Well. I would say just to stick to the function notation, g of zero is equal to 11 times 1 12th to the zero. So remember, g of zero, that's not multiplication. That's just a way of noting that x went in, or zero went in for my x. So I'm looking for the y at that point, which is the g of zero. Well, any number raised to the zero power is equal to one. And that's why I think the algebra here is so important. You need to know that fact, okay? That's gonna come up in lots of places and many places where the calculator might not help you. So you really need to know every number raised to the zero power is one, all right? Now this question is just, what is 11 times one? Hopefully you don't need a calculator for that. The answer is 11, so that's our y coordinate and that is choice A. Again, you could graph it. You probably would have seen very quickly that 0, 11 was the y-intercept, but this algebra is essential. So no real excuse here. You got to learn that.